If you look at the countryside in Ireland, you may be struck by all the stones, the intricately constructed stone walls, and the rocks scattered across the land. When St. Patrick of Ireland was at one of the lowest points in his life, he compared himself to such a stone. This much I know for certain, he wrote in his famous letter, The Confession. Before God humbled me, I was like a stone stuck deep in a mud puddle. But then God came along and with his power and compassion, reached down and pulled me out, raised me up, and placed me on top of a wall. What had brought Patrick to such a low point? Pirates. Patrick may be the patron saint of Ireland, but he was born in Britain, historians believe around the end of the 4th century AD. But his world was overturned just short of his 16th birthday when marauding Irish pirates descended on his village. They captured Patrick and carried him off to Ireland, where he became a slave, put to work watching sheep. Patrick confessed that as a youth in Britain, he did not believe in God, even though his father was a priest. It wasn't until this point in his life, a slave in Ireland caring for sheep in the fields, that he began to pray. That's when the visions began to stir. One night, while sleeping, he heard a voice say to him, You have fasted well. Soon you will be going home. Then in another dream, he heard the same voice again, this time saying, Behold, your ship is ready. Patrick provides no details about what must have been a perilous escape. He simply says that after six years of slavery, he ran to the coast where he found a ship, just as the voice had said. Initially, the captain would not let him on board, so Patrick began to pray. Just as he had given up and began to walk away, one of the sailors rushed up to him and welcomed him on the ship. After a dangerous crossing, Patrick was reunited with his family in Britain, and he continued to experience the miraculous. Most mysteriously, he began to have visions calling him back to Ireland, the place of his slavery, the place from which he had escaped. In one vision, a man named Victoricus brought Patrick a large number of letters, and as Patrick read them, he said he suddenly heard the voice of the Irish calling out to him. They said, we beg you, holy boy, come here and walk among us. Patrick returned to Ireland where he became a powerful missionary, building the church stone by stone. However, contrary to popular belief, he did not drive all the snakes out of Ireland. In fact, Ireland has never had snakes. So Patrick's story is not just one of shamrocks and green hills. It's also about mud, rocks, slavery, and pirates. What's more, the ultimate irony is that the pirates, plundering villages in search of slaves and wealth, discovered a far greater treasure. Unbeknownst to them, they brought to Ireland the person who would go on to become a national treasure, St. Patrick. For more history, check out Doug Peterson's historical novels, including The Puzzle People, a murder suspense story based on the rise and fall of the Berlin Wall. If you want to see more of our videos, please subscribe to the History by the Slice YouTube channel. Until next time, this has been History by the Slice.